Four years ago, I was on location at a portrait shoot and I was using this Canon bag, our first photo bag. At the time, we did shoot Canon and I had placed this bag along with three L lenses and my backup 5D Mark II a few yards away from me on the grass while we were shooting. Now I'm good at a lot of things. Well, a few things. But one thing I'm horrible at is situational awareness when I'm in the creative zone. If I'm trying to run a photo shoot, I'm absolutely horrible at remembering where I put gear. I misplace things all the time. Any organization, regardless of how carefully prepped the night before, it all goes out the window once I start shooting and I'm a really good candidate for an assistant, but that wouldn't work out for other reasons um, that I won't get into here. But anyway, at that shoot, it's no surprise that as I was shooting and as the shoot progressed, we slowly moved further and further away from the bag. And you can probably see where this is going. By the time we got to the point where I wanted to switch a lens, we'd moved quite a ways away from where I'd put down this bag. It was still within seeing distance, but far enough away to be completely vulnerable. Realizing I'd left it unattended, I rushed back to where we started. And no, it hadn't been stolen luckily, but the sprinklers had turned on and my expensive gear was receiving an unwanted shower. Fortunately, none of the gear was lost. It all made a recovery, but um, the experience scared me quite a bit, and it was a little bit mortifying also in front of the client. After I got home from that shoot, I resolved that that would never happen again. I decided that for the way my brain worked, if it was just me running and gunning um, without the nay or no assistant, I would be keeping all the gear I needed with me on me at all times. But backpacks are problematic here. If you need to get into your pack or switch out a lens, you have to take the backpack off and really need to put it down. And when I put that backpack down, I'm always tempted to leave it where I put it down and not put it back on again because I'm in a hurry and I'm in a creative zone. So after an exorbitant amount of online searching, I found this. This is the absolute perfect bag for tactical photography. This is the Hazard 4 EVAC sling bag. And for the last four years, this has been my best friend. So today I wanted to take you through this photo bag as well as three other Hazard 4 sling bags that I use and tell you why they are my favorite photo bags. It's important to note as I do so that two of these three bags I have used long term and I purchased with my own money but two of the other bags were recent gifts from Hazard 4 but I'll still endeavor to do my best to be unbiased in what I like and what I do not like about all four of these bags but let's keep talking about this first one because it's my favorite by far the first reason I love it far more than I love backpacks is that you do not have to take it off to switch gear it's super smooth to just loosen the strap and sling it around and then and then swap the gear out. While in the front, you have access to just about everything you need. Um, you have access to the largest pocket where most of your gear is gonna be, where you can swap out quickly. And then you have two side pockets here um, where you can switch out batteries, lens filters, whatever you need. I can't emphasize enough how wonderful this is to have access to your whole kit without it coming off of your body. It's been so much peace of mind for me. Though maybe it doesn't look super cool to have the bag in front of you on your chest, um, it does provide a stable shooting platform also to help you just be a little bit more stable. Often I'll shoot for quite a while with the bag at my front, especially if I'll be switching primes out quite a bit. The other thing I love about it is that it's extremely comfortable. I have no trouble wearing this for hours through a shoot as long as I don't try to pack it too full. The shoulder strap is large. It's got plenty of surface area and padding. And there is a secondary strap for extended periods of time where you don't need to access gear that can provide additional support. And there's plenty of padding on the back as well. I even use this bag regularly for short hikes and it's possible to strap a tripod to the side. And I've done that many times and hiked with it with no problem. So I've told you that I've had this bag for years. And um, the other thing that I really love about Hazard 4 bags is that they're made uh, out of Cordura fabric, not your run-of-the-mill fabric. This is military-grade fabric um, with high tear and tensile strength, and it's inherently water resistant. Most other photo bags these days will not have anything this robust, and they will just... They'll just not last. After four years, you won't find a single abrasion on this pack and I've used and abused it more than any other bag I've ever owned. It looks a little faded from the black. That's 
only because I take it out in the red rock dirt of Southern Utah constantly. On hindsight, I, I probably should have gotten the, the coyote colored um, version um, to be able to use it out of doors. Um, but I do love the black four events, so maybe I should have just had two of them, but you know, hindsight's 2020. So I really love this bag, if you can't tell. I use it constantly. There are two other things that I wish, though, that I could improve or that they will improve in future versions. Um, I really wish I had ha access to the whole main compartment while it's at my chest at the front. Um, as it is right now, you get access to, um, you know, what is it, like three-fifths of it. Um, whereas this compartment here, you access from the top compartment, which you have to, takes a little work to get to and you have to take it off your bag to get to it. Um, and I don't, I don't love that. Um, I would prefer if this, there was another zipper right here. I, I understand for structural integrity, they probably, um, that's probably why the whole thing doesn't unzip, but maybe they could just separate it in half. I'm not sure, but I would like it more if I could do that so I don't ever have to take it off my back. The other thing is this top compartment here this is a, is a nice little compartment. It's got, um, it's, it looks like it's made for filters and that's really helpful and nice. But again, you have to take the bag off really to utilize it. So I just, I don't, I never even use this. And that's just the way that I use it. Other people may not mind that design. Those are just my opinions. The next bag I wanna show you is the Hazard for Freelance. This is the baby brother of the Photo Recon, and I got this bag specifically for events where I don't need quite the leaderage. This has all the best things about the Photo Recon, but half the size. Of course, you have the main compartment, which can be configured any which way you want, and like the Photo Recon, has two access points, one here and one right here. The reason I like this bag better is that you can get to this access point while it's in your, on your chest. We also have several smaller compartments, three other compartments, um, including a small thermoformed hard shell pocket. This is ideal for crushables, but um, this is usually where I end up putting batteries, all my Fuji, little Fuji batteries, and it can also fit an extra prime lens. But like the Photo Recon, this is super comfortable, um, has nice padding all the way around from down here, and of course, lots of surface area. Uh, again, the thermoformed back, and it does have that side strap for extra um, support for extended hiking or whatever you may be doing. Feels good. I, I, again, can strap a tripod to the side and I have used this for hiking as well, um, but I really love this for events. That's where I really use this the most. Speaking of which, I did do a video not too long ago about this bag and my Fuji gear setup and what I use for my events. And there was one important item I forgot to mention. While I do stick just two prime lenses in this for my events, occasionally you do need just a bit more reach. At times like those, um, I need a 50 to 140. And when I need that, um, I have this jelly roll that I can attach to the base of this bag and then just stick my 50 to 140, fits perfectly in there. And then I can bring it along to those events too. A lot of the events I shoot don't require that reach, but when I do, I have it. And that's one thing I really love about Hazard 4 is the bags are created for tactical needs. They're very modular. You can attach all sorts of different things and we'll even see more of that as we continue on. But as amazing as these, I see my mic is, is my mic good? Okay, as amazing as these sling bags are, um, there's one time that they don't work, and that is any time you need to, to do traveling with a laptop. There's no way to get laptops into these bags, of course, and that's one requirement that has made me leave these bags behind on several trips where I wish I could have had them. And just before Danae and I left on our Hawaii trip, Hazard 4 was awesome enough to send me this bag for me to try out specifically for that trip, and I did use it as my primary travel bag. This is the Hazard 4 Blast Wall. And although it looks like a more traditional backpack, it's not, this is a sling bag, but it's got more girth to it, allowing for several additional pockets, um, which will allow for a laptop to fit nicely, either there at the back or in this front, front compartment here. Like other sling bags, this one will also sling around to the front, but what makes it slightly different is the design of this zipper. It's got a curve to it, so you can only open it just enough um, to get 
a camera body in and out. Um, or you could maybe do two different compartments, but really it's designed just to get you access to your camera quickly. This is super nice for travel. There have been many times with my normal travel bags where I've had a camera stowed away, saw something I would have loved to photograph and I just didn't have enough time to dig into the bag and get it out. So with this, it's, it's, uh, it's very quick um, to have access to it. Um, and it gives you that benefit that the other sling bags do although you won't have access to your full bag. But it's funny to me sometimes as photographers, we spend so much time debating which camera is going to be the best for getting superior photos, but often it isn't the camera at all that dictates if we get good shots. It's often the supporting accessories that we use that allow us to get um, the shots we need to because we have the gear that allows us to do that. So having easy access to a camera is absolutely non-negotiable for me and um, with having a good travel bag. And there's one more thing I like about this bag a lot for that, and that is um, the D-ring um, that, that Hazard 4 creates, created, um, which allows you to attach a small um, Arca Swiss plate to the front. This allows you to have your camera right there um, without having to have a strap that's gonna get all mixed up and jumbled up with, with your pack. Um, this is incorporated into the pack and it's very nice. And I use this constantly in Hawaii um, whenever I needed to do something that took a little bit more um, where this might be flopping around or whatever, then again, I can just sling the bag around, stick this away, tuck it away nicely. It's really great. The only thing is that I would get, I need to get a better Arca Swiss plate. This plate is a little large. I know they make smaller ones, but this one's a bit too heavy so it can sling around and becomes a hazard a danger to others. So, um, but in general, I love this innovation that they have um, on the front strap. Now, while I do love sling bags for how tactical they can be, you may have noticed that I do not have, I don't have breasts. In fact, rather the opposite, I tend to have a concave chest. But for those of us who do have chests that go the other direction, these bags won't work as well. And the folks of Hazard 4 are super considerate, so they did send another bag along with that one uh, for Danae to use also. This backpack is a version of the blast wall. It's called the Pillbox. And I'll be honest, I, we haven't used this bag much yet, um, though it will likely be our primary bag for a lot of landscape work that we do, thus the coyote um, color, which will help it um, not show the dirt of the Utah, Southern Utah landscape quite so much. And while the capacity is the same with this bag, there are some differences. For one, it's gonna work better for long distance hikes or travel where your priority is comfort and accessibility. This bag will work better for you. However, it is still possible to have easy access to your camera. It's just not quite as smooth um, because this bag, with this bag, you would have to do something more along the lines of you know, unstrap on one side and bring it over and then, am I hitting the mic again? Sorry. And then you would have, you could gain access this way, but it doesn't have that nice little C curve um, that the other bag does for quick and easy access. So it's a little bit more traditional backpack style. Now, just like I mentioned earlier with both of these bags, they are highly customizable. The front of these hard shells, um, have these hard points, they call them, which can be used to attach all manner of things. And so here I'll show you two examples of customization that you can do. And really the options are endless with these bags. Um, since these don't have like a dedicated tripod mount to the side, you could just use um, normal straps like I have here to mount a tripod on the side and that works fine. Um, but I experimented with a couple other options uh, since these have kind of that X design on the front. I thought that might go along with having a tripod on there well. So for this one, I, that's why I have this uh, bungee parachute cable. So I can just attach the tripod really easy and quick just to the back there. Um, and that might be my favorite way to carry a tripod, honestly. It's, uh, it's super cool. Um, with, with this guy, I tried using these, hard, these custom hard point solutions they give you and with just these basic straps. So I strap one underneath here and then one over the top. So 
Anyway, just an example of how much you can customize these bags to really fit your needs. But as you can tell, I really love these bags and I hope to continue to see some innovation out of Hazard 4. These bags evolved from tactical gear to photography. It'd be cool to see more of these, get, these bags evolve further into photography specific. Um, I know, for instance, that a lot of people will want to have back access through the back compartment to gear. That seems to be the trend among a lot of landscape photographers. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of bag Hazard 4 can come up with that, that allows that kind of access. But that's all I've got for you. Thanks for watching this kind of chaotic. I'm not very organized when it comes to reviewing bags, but if you're still watching, I appreciate that. I appreciate you very much. And I do wish you all the best in your photography endeavors. Remember to do some good with your camera and we will talk to you again real soon.